G'day, I'm Mark Hope and welcome to Swift Almanac. Now that we have Core Data installed, we need to design and build our database. For a relational database, there are two main concepts. First, we want to keep all the relevant data grouped together, and this is often called a table. But in Core Data, it's called an entity. Second, we want to keep relationships between these tables or entities, which is where we get the name relational database. The easiest way is to show you how. So leading off from where we uh, finished off last time, I've still got my copy of the final UI collection view, and I've clicked on the final .exe data model D, it's all a bit of a mouthful, and you can see on the left hand side we've got entities, fetch requests and configuration, and what we want to do is add an entity by clicking on the plus button down the bottom. Now if you've done relational databases before, then an entity is just a table name or a table, and uh, we're gonna call this entity person. Uh, so that's the name of the table, and then people will have attributes and relationships, and we can add an attribute and rename it. So we're gonna give them a name, and we can add another attribute and we'll give them agenda and another attribute and we'll give them an age. So in our login project that we did earlier, uh, our, our users had all three of those um, attributes. And if we look at our data model for my data, we've got name, age, and gender, and we're just duplicating what was in memory and we're putting it to make it a persistent model. Now, we're getting some errors all around the place, must have a defined type. So over here on the right hand side, show the data model inspector. So we click on the data model. Now we can say whether we want this to be optional or not, but the attribute type for age is definitely an integer and it has a minimum and a maximum value. It was 18 and 100 and we'll set the default to be 21. Then we click on gender. I might just change the editor style to table. Okay, so now we've got gender. You can see it's not defined. So we can just say that gender, we only had male or female, it was a Boolean. And name, of course, is a string. Then we will create another entity and We'll say that this is an address and the attributes for the address will be the street, which will be a string, um, the suburb, which will also be a string, the postcode or zip code if you're in America, will be a string and the country will also be a string. And what we'll also, in addition, what we'll do is we'll allow for multiple types of addresses. So we just call it the address type and we'll give that a value equal to an integer. And basically what we'll do is we'll have it if one, one's your home address, two's your postal address and three's your work address, just so we can show uh, relation, relationality. So we'll go back to the visual editor style and now we've got these two, um, two different tables, which are called entities. And these are the attributes 
And now uh, the relationship, well, just like everything that's visual in Xcode, you hold down the control key and drag from one entity to the other and it will create a relationship. Now we can name the relationship. So the person's, um, we'll change this to address. And going back the other way, the address will be the person. And what this allows us to do is one person uh, could have many addresses. We've already said that they could have a home address, a business address, and a postal address. And it also allows us, if we have an address, we can look back to see which people are at that address. So for instance, there might be three people that live at the same home address. There might be 15 people who, live, who work at the same work address. And there might be a couple of people who share the same postal address. So this would be a many to many relationship because one record in one table uh, can relate to many records in another table. And in the second table, uh, one record in that table can, uh, can relate to potentially many records as well. So that's a many to many relationship. Now for each of these uh, entities, over here, there is um, obviously the, the, the name and whether it's the parent entity or not. But under the class, we've got the name person. And then under global namespace or the module, we need to say current product module. And for code gen, what we want to do to start off with is say manual or none. And we need to do that for both of the entities. And then if we build that, everything's going to build with no problems. So uh, in the next tutorial, um, I'll show you how we can access all of this data. Now that we've created some entities, attributes and relationships, let's use Swift to make life easy for us. Watch closely in the next tutorial. If you have any questions about this tutorial, then please leave a comment below or hit me up on Twitter at Swift Almanac. Please subscribe to the channel, it's free, and check out our website at www.swiftalmanac.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.